Hi dear students, now we are going to start a new chapter that is a structure of atom. Structure of atom mainly discuss about composition of atom and how the fundamental particles are arranged in the atom that is given by the different atomic models. Okay, Thomson model, Rutherford model of atom, Bohr's model and finally we will learn about the quantum mechanical model which uses four quantum numbers to describe the electrons in the orbits and as well as in the orbitals in the atom around the nucleus. Structure of atom which will mainly talks about composition of atom and how the different fundamental particles are arranged in an atom. The first time the word atom is coined by a Greek philosopher. Atom is derived from Greek word Atomino, Atomino, which means, which means uncuttable. So, atom cannot be further divided into smaller particles. The atom is derived from the Greek word which is Atomino, which means uncuttable. The first time the word atom is coined by a Greek philosopher, his name is Democritus. Democritus. So, Democritus in the ancient time is a Greek philosopher. He has given first theory regarding the matter. Every matter of the universe is made up of the molecules. Every matter of the universe is made up of the molecules. And the molecules can be further divided into atoms. But atoms are indivisible. Atoms cannot be further divided into smaller particles. Right? So, on the other hand, at the same time, Indian philosopher, his name is Maharshi Kannada. Maharshi Kannada. He told that his theory regarding the matter he has given in the language of Sanskrit. He told matter as Padat. And Padat, that is matter, is made up of anos. Anos means that is a molecules. This is in the language of Sanskrit, right? And anos is made up of the paramano. Paramano. So, paramanos we cannot further divide into smaller particles, right? This is ancient time. Two philosophers simultaneously they have given theory regarding the matter. Right. One is a Greek philosopher, his name is Democritus. He is a person first time who coined the name Atom, which is a Greek word derived from the Greek word Atomino, which means uncuttable. So Maharshi Kannada is an Indian philosopher, same theory as given in the language of Sanskrit. So after many years, many years later, in the 1808, a British chemistry teacher, his name is Dalton. Dalton has given his atomic theory. Dalton's atomic theory. So, in this also, he assumed that atom cannot be further divided into smaller particles. There is no change whatever the theory is given by ancient philosophers and John Dalton. Right here also he told atoms cannot be Atoms cannot be further divided into further divided into smaller particles. Smaller particles. Okay. There is no change in this statement. Earlier what the philosopher told, same thing Dalton has given about the atom. Right? Atoms cannot be further divided into smaller particles. Right? Around 1800, in the year 1800, two scientists, 
Nicholson and Carly. Carlis, Carlis, his name is Carlis. Okay, Nicholson and Carlis, two scientists. First time they have done electrolysis of water. Electrolysis of water in the year 1800. So, from the electrolysis of water, they are able to produce a decomposition of water by using electricity. Electrolysis. They are able to produce hydrogen gas and oxygen gas right, in the electrolysis of water. Based on this electrolysis, the first time one scientist name is John Bergelius, he has given first chemical bond theory. Right? Let us discuss what is the theory is given by John Bergelius. Students, based on the electrolysis of water, the scientist name is John Bergelius. Bergelius has given his chemical bond theory. According to John Bergelius, all metals, all metals and hydrogen are positively charged, positively charged. And non-metals are negatively charged, non-metals are negatively charged. That is, in the compounds are the molecules. In the compounds are molecules. According to Bergelius, all metals and hydrogen are positively charged and non-metals are negatively charged in the compounds. Whatever the electricity we are giving to decompose a particular substance, for example, you take water. According to Bergelius, hydrogen has positive charge. Oxygen has negative charge. There is a strong electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions. Whatever the electricity we are using, that is used in overcoming the force of attraction between the ions. Right? Then it will give us H2 plus R4. Which is not the most appropriate theory, which is given by John Bergelius around 1800. Right? So, the most appropriate chemical bond theory has been given by two scientists that is, Louis and Cosell. Louis and Cosell, they have given the first appropriate chemical bond theory in the year 1900. So, there is a 100 years later most appropriate theory is given, right? So, about this Cosell and Lewis theory, we will learn in the chapter chemical bonding. But Bergelius, based on the electrolysis which is done by Nicholson and Carlis, that is, all metals and hydrogen are positively charged and non metals are negatively charged in the compounds. Whatever the electricity we are giving, that will be used in overcoming the force of attraction between the oppositely charged ions. Right? The most appropriate theory is given in the year 1900. Right? So, after the electrolysis of water in the 1830s, 1830s, a scientist name is Humphrey Davy. Humphrey Davy, he has done the first electrolysis of molten sodium hydroxide and a potassium hydroxide by using the electricity that is molten by using electro electricity he is able to decompose these two compounds by the electrolysis of sodium hydroxide he is able to produce elemental sodium and potassium for the first time so up to that the people are thought that these two compounds have been divided, but he showed by using electrolysis process. So we can he is able to produce sodium, elemental sodium and potassium from the electrolysis of sodium hydroxide and potassium hydroxide. Then his assistant, we know that is a famous scientist. His name is Michael Faraday. 
Michael Faraday has given quantitative relations quantitative relationships relationships in electrolysis that in the syllabus we will study like a Faraday's first law, Faraday's second law in the chapter electrochemistry so then Faraday in the 1830s only he raised the question to the chemist at the time so if atom contains nothing in it if the atom is not further divided into smaller particles how they are able to produce the charges how the atoms are able to produce the charges able to produce able to produce the charges then scientists have started doing the experiments that is the electrical discharge of the gases in the CRT cathode ray tube right then scientists has started doing the experiments that is electric discharge of gases electric discharge of gases discharge of gases so the first time the considerable effect that is considerable experiment has been done by two scientists around that is in the 1850s by Crookes and the Flecker Crookes and Flecker two scientists has started the considerable experiments that is by using the cathode ray tube okay discharge tube experiment has been started by Crookes and Flecker so that's why discharge tube is also known as a Crookes tube but the first successful one is the person who discovered the protons in the year 1896 that is a gold stain gold stain is a first successful person who discovered the protons right and next in the 1897 there is a 11 years gap between discovery of protons and electrons by J.J. Thomson J.J. Thomson he has discovered electrons right but the proton name later it has been given by Ernest Rutherford Ernest Rutherford okay so in most of the books they are giving first discovery of electrons and discovery of proton so first let us start our discussion with the discovery of electron right discovery of fundamental particles fundamental particles the first discovery of electron discovery of electron which is known as cathode rays cathode rays JJ Thompson he has done this discharge tube experiment discharge tube is thick shell glass tube hard glass tube so in which two metal plates are arranged two metal plates are arranged the metal plate which is connected with the negative terminal of the battery the small line indicates that is a negative charge and big line indicates a positive the metal plate which is connected with the negative terminal of the battery this is known as cathode the charge on the cathode is negative the metal plate which is connected with the positive terminal of the battery that is called as anode that is called as anode right so then 
when we pass that I voltage 10,000 volts and this is under low pressure, a gas field under low pressure that is connected with the vacuum pump and the pressure inside is 0 0.001 mmHg mercury, right? Millimeter mercury. Discharge tube, this is first filled with the some gas and connected with the vacuum pump where the pressure of the gas is 0 0.001 mmHg and this is subjected to high voltage high voltage DC source then he observed that some invisible rays are moving from the cathode to anode cathode to the anode some invisible rays are traveling like this right so how this can be observed is this is by taking a perforated anode which has holes in it which has holes in it then this is coated with the fluorescent material like a zinc sulphide when these invisible rays are striking the zinc sulphide fluorescent material it will cause some scintillations they will create scintillations right so then let us discuss whatever the property of cathode rays cathode rays cathode rays properties cathode rays cathode rays will move from cathode to anode cathode to anode that is the first property these are invisible rays are moving from cathode to the anode which can be observed by making some zinc sulphide fluorescent coating when the cathode ray strikes this zinc sulphide screen they will make scintillations right so cathode rays will, will move from cathode to anode second property is cathode rays cathode rays will travel in a straight line straight line for example instead of placing the anode here if you place the anode here right if you place the anode here again the cathode rays are striking this zinc sulphide screen so that if you give the clear information that cathode rays are traveling in the straight line right these rays will cast the shadow of shadow of object which is placed in their path which is placed in their path Right. For example, if you place some object here, then the shadow will be cast by the cathode rays. Cathode rays will move or will rotate a lighter paddle wheel. Paddle wheel lighter metal paddle wheel which is kept in their path kept in their path so from this what is the conclusion is some metal paddle wheel is kept here metal paddle wheel is kept in their path lighter paddle wheel is kept in their path then they are able to rotate this lighter paddle wheel okay from this, there is a conclusion, these have material particles, material particles and in the applied magnetic as well as in electric field, they will get deviated, they will get deviated in applied 
electric and magnetic fields magnetic fields in the electric field in the electric field they will bend towards they will bend towards positive plate positive plate which confirms which confirms the charge on the cathode rays charge on the cathode rays is negative charge cathode rays is negative charge right so let us continue there is a some properties of cathode rays students next property is cathode rays cathode rays consists of material particles material particles which are named as negatrons by jj thompson jj thompson okay later they are named as electrons they are named as electrons by gj stoney right we know cathode rays consists of the material particles right because they are able to rotate the metal paddle wheel bearings they are material particles which are named as uh, negatrons by jj thompson later they are named as electrons by gj stoney right then when cathode rays strikes heavy metal surfaces heavy metal surfaces like tungsten they will produce they will produce x rays x rays right then the charge to mass ratio charge to mass ratio that is e by m value of cathode rays cathode rays is independent of independent of gas taken in discharge taken in the discharge tube right for example students if you take hydrogen gas inside the discharge tube okay atomization of hydrogen will produce two h atoms and loss of one electron will give h plus right so ionization of gas takes place when it is subjected to high voltage right so then cathode rays always consists of the electrons right and if you take helium gas is taken loss of one electron it will produce h e plus right again the cathode rays consists of electrons only if two electrons are lost minus two electrons then we we'll get h e two plus whatever the gas we are taking in the discharge tube always cathode rays consists of negatively charged particles they are electrons so that is the reason why charge to mass ratio of cathode rays is independent of the gas taken in the discharge tube right in the next class we will continue our discussion with the discovery of protons thanks for watching